Hey there, Melissa with Atlas CFO, and today we're talking about a profitability hack. I know you're going to love it. Can't wait for you to join me in today's session. So there is something that we have seen boost profitability over and over and over, and it is project tracking. So this is one of our top profitability hacks. I would say it's in the top five of things that we have seen change the net income of our contractors. What our contractors want is awesome project performance that beats their estimate. This is critical. They also want gross profit that covers all their overhead and then some. They want net income that leaves them enough for reinvestment bonuses and return of, of risk back to our owner. And we want positive cash flow. So how do we do that? Like how can we accomplish all of these things with some sort of a, a quick hack? I will use the words of my mentor and ex-boss Larry Van Horn. A number is just a number unless you have another number to compare it to. This one concept will change the way you look at profitability and will change the way you look at job performance. And it's accounting. Yeah. Okay. What we're going to talk about today is two different types of accounting. And one of them most people are very familiar with. And the other one is kind of surprising that it's actually kind of accounting-y. Okay, so we're going to break these into two categories. The first category is what we're going to call job costing and billing, otherwise known as kind of actual accounting. That's what you think of whenever you think about how the cost and the billings get into your books. So this is where we're putting it into our software. We've got our vendor invoices, material invoices, subcontractor invoices, and all of our billings to our customers. These are then coded by cost code. If you're using a cost code system in our accounting software, and then we get to also look at how much we've billed according to the contract. This creates cost and billing. And these two columns are very important when we use percentage of a completion method, which is the proper way for construction contractors. And we then create those two columns on our WIP. If you've looked at any of their, our WIP videos, you'll see these columns on the WIP. They are two of the four required columns. Okay, now let's talk about the other type of accounting. Accounting, estimate accounting. So maybe these accounting isn't the right word, but you know, you're, you're coming to accountants, so you're gonna get these words. Estimate accounting is where we're tracking what is happening on the job. So this means that we're going to maintain the current contract amount, which includes change orders, back charges, anything that would affect our billing. It will be the estimate accounting, so anything that affects our cost estimate, our cost budget, that would include change orders, billing, overruns or underruns of our cost, anything that changes our total estimate. And I like to tell people on this one and on the first one, but on, on these two, you want to kind of close your eyes and say at the end of the job, how much am I going to bill my customer and how much are we going to have in cost in this job? And this creates this estimate accounting. So we have to keep this up to date. We always have to know how much are we expecting. Otherwise, we can't compare it to the other number. Just remember our quote, a number is just a number unless you have another number to compare it to. Whenever we look at job cost, it's interesting, but it becomes very important when we compare it to the estimate. One thing to note, and the part that kind of can get confusing, is where are these two pieces located? So our, our job costing, our actual accounting, is in an accounting software. But our estimate accounting could be in a lot of different places. In a lot of our more robust softwares, we will see the estimate accounting done in the accounting software. Sometimes we have project management software, like a Procore, and we keep our estimate in Procore. So we need to take our Procore estimate and compare it to our foundation cost. Or we could have in foundation, we could have the contract and estimate, but it has to be maintained. And then we can compare it to our actual cost. So you have to think about where do you keep these two types of accounting and then how can you bring them together so you can compare them. Another interesting point about this tracking system is who does it. So in job accounting, it's accounting. It's in the accounting software, the accounting department, the accounting people. When we talk about the estimate accounting, it could be done by a whole list of people. It could be project manager, estimator, project coordinator. Sometimes even our owners are involved in it. Sometimes accounting. But if it is your accounting department that maintains this estimate accounting, they have to receive inputs from someone else. They actually don't know how the job is going. So you're going to have to provide that information if they are the ones that maintain it. 
So how is it used? Besides the beautiful thing of comparing the two, and depending on how you operate, how many times you compare the two, but you absolutely are going to use both of these in your percentage of completion whip schedule. This, this schedule makes a huge difference because it gives you the opportunity to not only address any timing differences beyond the right method of accounting, but also allows you to compare estimate to actual right in one report. So you have to have both your actual accounting, your two actuals, billings and costs, and then you have to have your two estimates, your estimated contract and your estimated cost in order to make that contract schedule, WIP schedule, percentage of completion schedule work. You also have to make sure that you have proper cutoff whenever you're dealing with your actuals so that you know that you're comparing the right time frame actuals to the right time frame estimates. That way you know you always got apples to apples. When we think about estimate accounting, this actually controls a whole bunch of things in your organization. And sometimes this is, this is kind of shocking whenever you recognize everything that happens when we have proper estimating accounting, meaning we have the proper contract at all times and we have the up, most up to date estimated cost at all times. These two items allow us to determine profitability, whip schedule. It tells us how we're going to cash flow the job because we can see what that schedule is going to look like. It will tell us our backlog and this enables us to do projections. This tracking of estimate to actual not only gives us all of the benefits of the web schedule, but it also gives us our forward looking data. Without the estimate accounting, we are going to be more limited in what we can tell you your future. Okay, because both of these types of accounting are important, you have to figure out a way to make it work together because sometimes it's two different groups. It's the accounting group and it's the ops team. So how are you going to get them all together so that we can create estimates to actual? The work in progress is my favorite, that building that report is my favorite way to do it because that way you have a monthly system to track estimate to actual. And then you can convert to percent complete accounting. This, that one thing, I, that's, I always say it's my one report to rule them all. Um, that one report allows for a lot of these things to happen. You can also see cash flow from that. You can see backlog from that. The key to understanding here is this is not one person's job. Estimate to actual accounting is actually teamwork. And this, this one understanding of teamwork where everybody's coming together is what makes the tracking system work and what makes the profitability boost. I always like to bring it back to where are we in the layers of accounting? And although our estimate to uh, our estimating accounting touches all of these segments, where we're really focusing is getting into this transactions and the reconciliations. So we're still at the beginning stages of our accounting. And these two items that we're talking about, the actual accounting cost and billings and the estimate accounting for our contract and estimated costs are used in the transactions and the reconciliations. They're actually part of our accounting framework before financial statements. So this is really a foundational item that gives us the ability to track performance, increase profits, and produce financial statements. So what can you do? What can you do like, okay, I wanna, I wanna engage more in this tracking system. What can I do? So the first question is how can you easily address and find and compare these two? Is it going to be something in your accounting software? Is it going to be something in a spreadsheet? Is it going to be something in project management software? Just take a minute and figure out where everything is located so that you could compare them. Next, who's in charge of this? So if you have an accounting team, accounting person, you'll know that the actual cost and billings are for that person. Who is in charge of the contract and estimated cost? And then how can those two work together so that you can have one comprehensive system? Now that comprehensive system could be the accounting software. That's an answer. You just have to make sure that you have all the inputs going in there. Personally, I love it all in the accounting software. That's, that's my favorite because you've got one place to go. That doesn't mean that there's not a lot of other solutions that all work together. I also like a project management software that integrates or combines with an accounting software, those work really well. It's not important as much where it's located as having the system to make sure that they're both updated and that you can easily compare them. And finally, understand that everybody has to work together. This isn't an accounting problem. This isn't an operations problem. This is a joint 
discussion. This is where we really can do a lot of team building, a lot of working together, a lot of communication so that we can maintain both sets of accounting and then boost our profitability, compare the two. I, I'm going to add one last thing to why this is so important before we, we uh, leave each other today, which is whenever you have a budget, you naturally want to beat it. And this is the really the premise behind this tracking system. Whenever you know what your number is you're trying to beat, you're just like, oh, I can do it. It's like, it's like going into a, your favorite store, but you have only, you know, the hundred dollar bill. That's all you can spend. And, and this makes such a big difference for us because we are all naturally competitive, especially in this industry. We have some natural competition in, in, in our bodies. Like we just want to beat the number. And if you know the number to beat, you'll naturally beat it. And then you'll see that profitability boost. Thanks for joining me today and talking about the favorite subject of accounting. But I hope that you can take these ideas and put them into your own shop and increase that job performance. Talk to you soon.